If you thought Wednesday night's game was intense, today's game will be that times 10. Our Locked On Bearcats, your daily podcast on the Cincinnati Bearcats, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It's Sunday and it's game day as the Bearcats are in Memphis to take on the Tigers in a marquee American Athletic Conference showdown with so much at stake. I'm Alex Frank, your host of Lockdown Bearcats, each and every day as part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Cincinnati and Memphis, this is the last scheduled regular season meeting between these two teams in a rivalry that goes back to 1968. These two teams could meet again in the conference tournament in less than two weeks. They could meet sometime down the road once the Bearcats join the Big 12. Maybe Memphis will join the Big 12 or a Power 5 conference down the road. But this is the last scheduled regular season meeting between these two teams. And these games are in tender Penny Hardaway for the Memphis Tigers. Since the start of that season, every game but one won by seven points or less. Seven points or less. The only one that was not was the first meeting in 2020. The Bearcats, though, have not beaten Memphis since 2020. That was back on February the 13th in a 92-86 to overtime classic at Fifth Third Arena. I called that game for Bearcats Media, one of the most memorable games that I had the privilege of broadcasting during my time at Bearcats Media Sports Director. So today, the Bearcats and Memphis. Memphis is a really, really good team, but they are a beatable team. Memphis is a beatable team because they are prone to turning the ball over, especially in the month of February. There are two games that stand out to me in the month of February that Memphis, one of them they lost, the other they won. But the one they lost against Tulane on February the 4th, it was a home game. They turned the ball over 22 times in that game. And then against UCF just last week, the Tigers won by one point, but they turned the ball over 24 times, 24 times, and still managed to escape with a win. And those are the, that is one of two things to watch out for in today's game. Watch for the assist to turnover ratio. When Memphis wins, they're only turning the ball over 13.4 times a game. When they lose, they're turning the ball over 15 times a game. When they win, and this is the other thing to watch for today, free throw shooting. Memphis is shooting 74% from the line and wins only 71.4% in losses. So Memphis is a really talented team. They do a lot of things well, but they also do a lot of things that could allow a team like Cincinnati, that is a much improved team this season, to win their to win this game. Memphis is not Memphis has lost seven games this year. And what's interesting to me is it's not like they're losing games because of their offense. They're losing games because of their defense. In the seven games they have lost this season, the Memphis Tigers have allowed 90 points to St. Louis. Now, the St. Louis Billikens are having a really good season in the A-10. They allowed 70 points to Seton Hall. Seton Hall is middle of the pack in the Big East. But then you go further down their schedule. They gave up 91 against Alabama. Now, Alabama is one of the best offensive teams in the country. They're number two in the country for that reason. They also gave up 96 to Tulane, 107 in a double overtime thriller against UCF. They gave up 90 against Tulane the second time around. They did only allow 72 points to Houston, but the point is their defense is not very good, and that could allow the opportunity for a team like Cincinnati that ranks – Cincinnati ranks third – in the conference and scoring at 77.5 points per game. Memphis scoring defense, they're eighth in the conference. They're only eighth in the conference in scoring defense, allowing 73.2 points per game. So if you are a former track runner or still a track runner like I once was, and I like to think I still am, this is your kind of game because this game will be up and down, fast paced, three balls going in, lights out. It's going to be that kind of game. And I can't wait for it. So who to watch out for on Memphis? Memphis is a team that has a lot of talented players. Most notably, Kendrick Davis. 
and DeAndre Williams. Kendrick Davis is the leading scorer in the American, averaging 21.2 points per game. Over 20 points per game, he's the all-time leading scorer in AAC history, which, given the AAC doesn't have a long history just yet. But Kendrick Davis is a is over 2,000 points for his career. He also is a very good distributor of the basketball. He's averaging 5.7 assists per game. His total of 154 leads the American Athletic Conference. He's not a very good shooter, though. If you look at the statistics, his statistics tell you that he is only shooting 41.6% from the floor and 31.7% from three-point range. He's shooting 84.6% from the free-throw line, so he does get to the free-throw line. And when he does, he does shoot very well. But from the field, not so much. And that's where he could potentially shoot Memphis out of the game. But he's aided by DeAndre Williams. I think this is Memphis's best all-around player. DeAndre Williams is averaging 17.4 points per game this season, 7.9 rebounds per game, and he shoots the ball very well from the field, 54, 54.2%. He shoots 40.8% from three and 73.3% from the free throw line. And by the way, he has, I believe, eight double-doubles this season. It's either, it's either eight or nine, but he has numerous double-doubles. I'll, I'll check on that. But DeAndre Williams is a really, really good all-around player for the Memphis Tigers. And that is where Cincinnati could run into some problems. The last time these two teams played was on January 22nd inside Fifth Third Arena. The Bearcats held Memphis to just 75 points in that game. But the problem was the Bearcats got off to such a poor shooting start. By the way, that was his ninth double-double of the season, DeAndre Williams, on Thursday against Wichita State. So he has nine double-doubles, DeAndre Williams, nine. That's a lot. The Bearcats did not shoot the ball well to start that game against Memphis, and it ultimately was too big to overcome the slow start. They lost 75-68 to despite a great performance by Victor Lockett in that game. David DeJulius had a solid performance in that game. It, it was a close game. The Bearcats had their chances to win that game. Lock in at 20. Landers Nolly the second, who will be making his return to FedEx form after transferring from Memphis to Cincinnati last offseason. David DeJulius had 15 points. Memphis did not make a shot over the final 425, and they still managed to win the game by seven. And that, to me, is, a, is the most frustrating part from that game. So Kendrick Davis, back to the Memphis players to watch, Kendrick Davis and DeAndre Williams. But keep your eyes on Keontae Kennedy and Elijah McCadden. Veteran players for Memphis include Alex Lomax and Malcolm Dandridge, who feel like they've been there for 20 years. Alex Lomax made his return against Houston. He had been out since January 11th. And from a roster standpoint, if you want to know the players that I just mentioned, Kendrick Davis wears number three, Williams number 12, McCadden number zero, Kennedy number one, Lomax number two, Malcolm Dandridge number 23. Those are my players to watch. I'll get into my keys to the game after I tell you how this game day preview episode of Lockdown Bearcats is brought to you by Built Bar. Are you looking for a delicious treat but don't want all of the fat and calories? Then you got to try a Built Bar. We just got through the holidays. And I know my goal is to eat a little healthier this year. If you're like me where you want to eat healthier but don't want to compromise taste, then, man, I've got just the thing for you. you got to try Built because with Built, healthy is actually tasty. Seriously, they're so delicious you won't think they're good for you. Perfect for your New Year's resolution. And what makes Built Bar so good? Well, for starters, they are all covered in 100% real chocolate. That's right, real chocolate. And they come in unbelievable flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, and coconut almond. And I'm not sure how Built does it. But these bars taste like a candy bar while maintaining amazing macros. And what's even better is that they are healthy. Only 130 calories and 4 grams of sugar with a whopping 17 grams of protein. And now you don't need to wait around to get a box for years. We've been talking about ordering your Built Bars at Built.com. Now you can get them at your local Walmart or Sam's Club. That's right. Head to your nearest Walmart today. Walk to the pharmacy section and grab yourself a box of Built Bars. You can pick up a four coconut puffs. If you're close to Sam's Club, run in and grab a 13-bar box with our hit flavor. You can thank me. Back here on Lockdown Bearcats, I'll Frank with you as part of our game day preview episode. Cincinnati and Memphis, these two teams right next to each other. 
in the American Athletic Conference. Memphis has overtaken Tulane. They're in second place right now, 11 and 4 conference. Cincinnati, 10 and 6 in fifth place. But that could change today, depending upon the outcome of the game. A lot riding on this game. Both teams looking to get in that 2C, 3C range so they can both avoid Houston until the conference championship game. Keys to the game and what is going to be a very fun game today between Cincinnati and Memphis. Memphis is 6-2 and two since that last meeting on January 22nd. Their only losses in that stretch. Home and overtime to Tulane, 90-89, to 89, a game where they turned the ball over 22 times. They also lost on the road at number two, Houston, 72-64, but that was without Kendrick Davis. Memphis this season, six times scoring 80 or more points, and that is in that stretch since January 22nd, I should I should say. Six times this in that stretch, Memphis has scored 80 or more points, and twice they have hit 99 points. 99. This is a very good offensive team. And you look at some of their games. I mean, they played SMU right after Cincinnati. They had five double-digit scorers and a 99-84 win. They had four players in double figures in their next game against Tulsa. And then look at this game against South Florida. 99-81 road win. The game USF played right before they came to Cincinnati. DeAndre Williams had 24 points, five rebounds, two assists. Davis had 23 points, eight assists, five rebounds. And Kennedy added 19-5-2. and two. Those are, They are just getting production everywhere on this team. Thursday night, they played Wichita State. They won 83-70. Yeah, no, I'm sidetracking for my keys to the game. But just an overview, overview of what Memphis has done since they last played Cincinnati. Memphis, Kendrick Davis had 19-5-4. Williams, 18-9-5 on Thursday. Memphis shot 50% from the field in both halves. That is one thing that Memphis will do really well. They are a really good shooting team. Memphis, as a team, they're shooting 48.4% from the floor, 34.2% from the field. In fact, and I bring this up after watching Gonzaga last night, which we know they are a really good shooting team, where they stand statistically in where their field goal percentage ranks as a team. But my keys to the game today, let's get to my keys to the game, the Bearcats and Memphis. Number one, fast start. You can't fall behind. Cincinnati in their last two games, Really, has gotten off to slow starts. They got behind early against Central Florida. They got behind early against Temple. And Temple may have been more so defensively as opposed to offensively. But still, you cannot fall behind on the road against this Memphis team. Because Memphis is a really, really good offensive team. And they will make you pay if you fall behind early. And they start hitting shots. By the way, against Central Florida, Bearcats fell behind at most by 6, 17 to 11, which is under 12 minutes to go in that first half. So a slow start cannot happen today against Memphis. Number two, move the ball. Move the ball. The Bearcats only had 15 assists on Thursday or Wednesday night against Temple. Wes Miller said they didn't really move the ball around as much as they would have liked to. We need to see that today against Memphis. Spread the ball around to Davenport, to Nolly, inside a lock-in. You cannot just try to create shots in this game. This is not going to be a physical war like it was against Temple. Memphis will bring its game of shooting the ball, constantly putting pressure on you by making shots, and you're going to have to match them shot for shot to beat them in this game. Number three, free throw shooting. Bearcats did not do a good job at the line against Memphis the last time, only 14 to 21. Memphis was 20 of 24. In a seven-point game, that does add up. And in a game... Of the magnitude like the one today, look for that to look for that to be a, a key in this game. And then number four, weather the storm. Memphis is going to go on runs. Memphis is going to go on their runs in this game today. You just have to find a way to weather that storm. Bearcats have done a good job of that over the years against Memphis. I mean, they were down 11 to them in 2019 before they came back and won the game. And they were down by 10. In 2020, in a game they won, they've been down to Memphis before. They have found ways to win games, and the hope is they can do that today against a really solid Memphis team. Now, back in a moment with my prediction and a and a look into a very good Memphis stat. All right, so I mentioned Memphis shoots 48.4% from the floor. 
and we look at field goal percentages across the country. Gonzaga leads the country at 52.6%. No shock there. Second, if you're wondering, is Colgate. They shoot 50.8. Memphis is 48.4, ranks 18th in the country. Now, you look at several other teams up there. you got Xavier. You've got Marquette, Indiana, Arizona. You've got Miami. You have a lot of teams who are ranked, a lot of teams locally, and then Memphis, 48.4. They're 18th in the country in field goal percentage. So this is a very, very good shooting team. Score prediction for today. I mean, we know the Bearcats have struggled against quad one teams. We know they've struggled against upper level competition, not just this year, but in both years under the West Miller era. Memphis, though, is too. Don't let their 11 4 conference record fool you because they're 1 3 against Tulane and Houston. They're 11 1 against every other team in the conference. So they feasted on the teams below them. But when they face upper level competition, they haven't really taken, they have not done well. And if Cincinnati can steal a win today, what that could do for them, as far as seeding goes in the conference tournament and momentum going into it, could be huge. It could be very impactful. But until I see Cincinnati beat a team like Memphis or Houston, I can't pick them to win. I'll say Memphis gets it done in a high-scoring game, an exciting game, 85-79. to 79. If I'm wrong, though, I'll never be happier to be wrong. So, Bearcats Memphis today, 2 o'clock on ESPN2, 700 WLW Live. Their pregame coverage will start just after 1.30. Dan Horde and Terry Nelson will have the call. I'm not sure who's calling the game on TV, but I can find out that real quick, of course. Dan and Terry live from the FedEx Forum in Memphis, Tennessee. So the game will be called on ESPN2. I wish this game's on ESPN, but it is not due to, I believe, Indiana and Iowa women's basketball is going to be on that channel. So we've got, if this will load here, the Bearcats and Memphis ESPN2 commentators will be, if I can, if this would load, but of course you can also listen to the game live on 700 WLW. The game today will be commented by, let's see, it was Derek Jones and Perry Clark on Wednesday night. It'll be Kevin Brown and Mark Adams. I have, I know both those guys. They're really, really good at what they do. So should be a fun game to listen to, watch all that, and I'll be back with you after the game right here on Lockdown Bearcats. I'm Alex Frank on Twitter at Frankie underscore Natty, Instagram Alex Frank, not underscore an email, Alex 3 Frank at gmail.com. That's all lowercase. Back after the game on Lockdown Bearcats, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day.